We're a long way from reaching our accuracy goal for this project, but thanks to last week's range trip, we at least have a starting point and know where we're at. We've got to get this rifle from shooting 3 MOA to under 1 MOA. So yeah, we got some work ahead of us. So today, we're going to start dialing in the accuracy of this rifle by opening up this barrel channel just a little bit where the stock's contacting the barrel. We're going to swap scopes and we're going to go over this rifle from one end to the other and just make sure everything's as it should be. And I also mentioned before that we've got a half a pound weight difference between this 2012 featherweight versus this 1982 XTR with the 2012 being heavier. So since we've got everything apart, we're going to see if we can't figure out where that weight difference is coming from also. So let's jump into this one. Both of these scopes are loophole VX2s, except for this is a 3x9x40 on the 2012 and a 2x7x33 on the XTR. And according to loophole, there's a little over an ounce difference between the scopes. And I'd planned on while we were just changing scopes, let's go ahead and just weigh the scopes and see. And I wanted to weigh the bases and rings also, but I'm changing my mind on that because of the way the loophole bases are done. You've got an offset on that back one that you can adjust for windage, which can be really handy. But these rings have been honed and I, I don't want to go messing with their alignment. So we're going to leave the, the bases and rings on here and just measure the difference in weight between the scopes. So let me pull this other one off real quick. Eleven point one ounces for the two by seven. Twelve ounces for the three by nine. So really close. And I'm going to put this red field four by twelve that I've been saving for the 1903 A3 on the featherweight just for the load testing, so we can rule out the scope. Plus, I'd rather load test with a little more magnification. But let's let's see what it weighs just out of curiosity. And it is 12.7 ounces. This XTR was bedded back before anybody did bedding. And this action is in here. This is one of those that you just kind of work it back and forth to get it out because it doesn't just fall out. There we go. Now this one might actually fall out. I haven't taken this one apart yet, so I do not know for sure. No, it's not falling out either. Now, with both of these apart, you can see the difference between the stocks, at least as far as the bedding goes. We've got the 1982 XTR here on the left, and there's a brown bedding compound in here. I don't know if that was factory or done afterwards. I'm guessing factory, just due to there not being much bedding in here, and I know they like to bed those early, lightweight, thin barrels. Okay, And then on the 2012, they've got the black bedding compound. Very similar in the stock. So we can even see the same cutter marks in the center. And I can also see a pressure point, looks like on the XTR right here. And on the 2012, I can see where someone's tried to relieve this before. I doubt that was factory, but somebody's definitely sanded here. So this is, this is not a new problem with this rifle. So maybe the stock was moving a little bit. We've got bedding in the back on both rifles. 
So two point bedding system for both. Very similar stocks. So the difference between the stocks, we've got one pound, 11.5 ounces for the 82. Two pounds, 1.8 ounces for the 2012. So we got a little weight in the stock there. And for the actions, for the 82 XTR, three pounds, 10 ounces. And for the 2012, three pounds, 12 ounces. And just out of curiosity, the bolts. Okay, so for the 2012 control round feed, 14.5 ounces, and for the 82 XTR, 13.7. So we're just heavier across the board on the 2012. That's our weight difference. For this barrel channel, I'm just taking a simple wooden dial, wrapping it with a 100 grit sandpaper, which yeah, is pretty coarse, but none of this is going to be seen on the inside. Like I said, I can see where somebody else has already hit it before. And we're just going to knock it down just a little bit. It doesn't take much. We were barely touching the barrel. And we know exactly where we were touching that, which is right at this sling stud. Right, I will seal this up with just a little men wax just to seal the wood here in a moment. But one other thing I wanted to do while we were in here was adjust the trigger weight on this 2012. I noticed the trigger was just a little bit heavy. I'm going to say around six pounds. And normally I'm not that particular about triggers. All right, let me just throw that out right now. And I've been getting a lot of questions lately about triggers and my preferences. Okay. I'm not that particular, but I like for the pull weight on the trigger to be about half the weight of the rifle or less. All right, so eight pound rifle, four pound trigger or less. A heavier rifle, you don't need as light of a trigger. Lighter rifle, you need a lighter trigger. With that said, though, I'm never going under three pounds on trigger pull. Now, I know a lot of you, you love your two-pound triggers, and each into their own. I'm just, this is just what I do. Okay, and the reason I never go under three pounds is safety. And it's not because I could accidentally set the rifle off because the trigger's so light and I accidentally touch the trigger. I don't go under three pounds to keep it drop safe. Yeah, a lot of y'all ain't thought about that. And I'm saying that because a couple of you grilled me on triggers lately. All right. As far as I know, the Savage Accu triggers, the only one that has that little blade in it. With that little blade, you got to press the blade before the gun will go off. That keeps it drop safe so you can set it really light. All the standard triggers, though, that do not have that little blade in there. The way we keep them drop safe is we don't set them too light. Now think about it. What kind of safety hazard is that if you've got a rifle that if you drop it, it might go off? And I don't know how far you can drop a rifle with it set at three pounds before it goes off. I haven't ran that experiment. But I know you can take a, a really light trigger inside the action and you can do this and it'll go off. Right, so, yeah, that's why I never go under three pounds. And I'd have been happy with this in around three and a half. But this trigger is not the easiest in the world to adjust. So we're going to leave this right where it is for now. I can't even see what size tool I need to get in there. And truthfully, I don't think Winchester meant for this trigger to be adjusted since I had to dig a lot of glue out of here just to even get to this part. All right, so we'll leave that alone, but I also wanted to take a moment to show you the difference between triggers, between the old triggers and the new ones, because this XTR has the old style trigger, which as far as I'm concerned, it's a much better trigger. So we've got the new style triggers here where everything's uh, assembled 
drop in piece. Well, here we've got the old style. This is a trigger. This is very similar to going back to your M98 miles. There's definitely differences on this one, but you get the idea. It's simple and it's reliable and it absolutely works and it is adjustable. Yeah, I thought that was neat seeing the old style trigger again. And one thing I want to make sure I do is wipe down the action and the underside of the barrel really well before I put all this back together. It's summertime here in the south and just taking rifles from inside to out, they sweat and me out here in the shop sweating. I don't want it rusting under here. All right, so anytime you've got a rifle in action apart, go ahead and just wipe it down real good on the bottom side since that rarely gets cleaned anyway and be careful though I, I'm wiping it down and I am leaving an ever so thin coat of oil but I'm not soaking it you, you don't want to soak this in oil and then have the oil soak into the wood on your stock because that oil will absolutely destroy a stock so just a, a nice wipe down here and don't forget to wipe down the magazine and the follower and spring and all that good stuff too while you're in there. And something else worth mentioning that's kind of interesting. Both of these are long actions. All right, and that's important for 257 Roberts if you want to load those heavier, longer bullets so it'll fit in the magazine. Remington chambered almost all of their rifles that were chambered for 257 Roberts in short action. Okay, they didn't do the cartridge any favors because then you had to use a round nose bullet if you wanted to shoot a 120 grain bullet. All right. if, if you decide you want a 257 Roberts, if you can, get it in a long action. And what they did on the XTR, I noticed the, the follower is a lot longer on the 2012 than it is on the XTR. The XTR, they actually blocked off part of the magazine to make it shorter. It's still not short as a short action, but a shorter. Well, this is what companies did for years and years and years before they had short actions. So all of the pre-64 Winchesters, 243, 308, they were all long actions. They just blocked off part of the magazine to make it a tighter fit but you still have plenty of room. Something else interesting I just noticed that I've never noticed before, but the floor plate on the XTR is actually steel. Now that is a surprise because the very first rifle that I know of that used a aluminum floor plate was the original pre-64 Winchesters and that was to cut down on weight. So I was surprised to see that on this XTR. And I can definitely feel the weight difference between it and this 2012. Interesting. And just like that, we are finished. And this rifle is ready to go to the range. We open up that barrel channel just a little bit. I checked it, we're good on our clearance. Um, swapped out scopes just just eliminate that as a possible cause got the wood sealed back up we went ahead and went over everything while we were in here this rifle is ready to go so, yeah so if nothing else I don't know how we're going to come out on our ammo I don't know how we're going to come out on our load testing but we know we got a good rifle Nothing left to do now but get back to the range and find out. And I've got ammo loaded up for that. So it's just a matter of getting to the range now whenever I can squeeze that in. So I hate to say it, but we're just going to have to wait till I get there. Find out. But we will find out soon. God bless. Have a good day.